What's going on YouTube? It's Donnie B all day bringing you another something something. Another frost cutlery knife. And I'll tell you what, frost cutlery as a brand is starting to grow on me. The prices are cheap, so you're led to believe that they're just cheap knives and not even worth the low money that you're buying for it. Sub $20, right? So you think, why are they so cheap? All right, you're not getting some crazy heat treat on the blade. It's just a stainless steel nothing special it's not some high carbon blend of you know ultimate universe paradoxes this is just stainless steel it's a stainless steel blade it's strong it's sharp a lot of the money they save is right here these cheap ass nylon sheaths while they work they get the job done it's actually padded which isn't so bad um it's just cheap so it probably cost them pennies to make the sheaths and or have them made um and, and that really really brings down the price um this however is absolutely worth the price that it is and it's sub 20 dollars. it might even be sub 15 i can't remember but this isn't bad at all this is the iron horse buoy um and i have to say the brown um, pack of wood handles are attractive they're not bad um as far as fit and finish um, it, it looks pretty good. You have a ton of liners going on, and it, it makes for a really nice. I mean, it's classic hunting hunting knife style with all the liners. You have the stainless pommel, but you have the brass guard. And for me, I don't like the. You know, it's either doing both stainless, doing both brass. You know, um, but either way, the liners are a mix of um, plastic and brass. But as far as fit and finish, you'll see some spots like here where it's not perfect here where that liner is all caca looking but overall it it's really not that bad i mean fit and finish who cares if the liners don't look majestically beautiful because what it comes down to is performance of the blade now it does have this little guy right here and while i'm assuming you can call it a choil it's not a real choil however if i put my finger on here and pull back to do some fine tuning feather sticking things like that um it's actually does keep my finger off the blade not too shabby it's um 10 and a half inches overall it's got a five and a half inch um it's the satin finished blade so it's not highly polished um it does have a fuller on both sides some knives i've looked at actually just one so far that i've tested um had a fuller on just one side no idea why but it is what it is. It's not a Pakistani blade. It's a Chinese blade. Um, you can really tell in the in the fit and finish where it's just a little bit better. Um, but edge wise, man, I'll tell you what, guys. This edge, I've been using this blade. Um, so to be getting hairs knocking off of this arm is pretty good. I'd like to actually shave off a little patch for you. If it's, I mean, I don't know if you could see the hairs on there. But uh, there's a few. This this thing, day one out of the box. I haven't resharpened it. I haven't put it to a stone anything. Day one out of the box, it was really, really shaving well. Now it's, it's still shaving. Not as good as it did day one. But it's a stainless steel blade, and it could use a just a quick little stonework, which is nothing. Um, let's see. Frost cutlery is in. It's actually, um, it's actually carved in there. It's engraved. It's got the little... Um, I'm assuming it's an eagle or a hawk or falcon. Some bird of prey they put on here. I have no idea what it is. But it works. I think it's a I think it's an eagle. It's the same one that's on here. It is. It's a it's a bald eagle. Um uh so here we go. Um what does the tang look like? No idea because I never took this thing apart. But I know that the blade comes in and starts, you know, right around boop, right around there. So the tang, I'm assuming, comes, you know, it comes down, out, down, and then you're going to have your peg with your screw end there. Um, I have no idea how long it is before you get to your rat tail. Um, no idea. Like I said, I haven't tested it. However, I really don't think I should be needing to. It is a hollow grind, um, which means it's not going to be made for chopping this is going to be an overall hunting knife um, not a knock down a tree knife 
Um, that being said, well, first I want to show you the thickness of this blade. This is actually kind of impressive. I mean, people knock frost cutlery all the time as being a cheapie and this and that, and and I did. I knocked them for for quite a while, you know, not completely believing in the product, and then I started using them, and. I used them because I had one and I figured, you know, I might as well um, give it a rating and uh, it it performed. And I was thinking to myself, well, all right, what can I say? I want to say something bad about it because it's a cheap blade and I'm, I test all these really expensive knives, but it performed. So I started thinking to myself, well, I want to test some more and see if I just got a fluke blade or if they're actually really that good for the money. And this is what I found out about Frost. Frost makes some very, very good cutters. They make some very, very good skinners. They make some very, very good camping knives, hunting knives, things like that. Um, as far as overall camp knife, here's where it, it comes to. If you are an overall camper and you carry things like a hatchet and a blade instead of just a blade or just a hatchet, then you are going to love Frost Cutlery products, especially something like this. The, the Iron Horse is a good little hunting knife. Now, why I say that is because I found out that batoning with these, with these, um, I don't want to say cheap, but with these cheaper um, stainless steel blades, that's where you're going to get your warps and things like that. Batoning with these is a no-no. Can I chop with it? Yeah, I can chop a bit. Remember, this is a rat tail and it's a screw on, so um, you don't want to chop too much and go overly crazy, but it will handle a lot of your camp needs. I mean, a lot, pretty much 99% of your camp needs. If you are a batoner, which nobody really needs to baton, but if you are somebody who relies on having a blade to baton with kindling, you can baton with them. Do -do -do -do. But if you're trying to smash it through some hardwood logs, forget about it. You're going to ruin the blade. Not worth it. When you're paying sub 20 bucks, use the hell out of it, but use it correctly. And when I say correctly, I don't mean like swing through water bottles, but we're gonna do that anyway to start. So let's start. All right, so to the people at Poland Springs, I just wanna say it's not that I don't like you guys. Um, it's just that you make a good water bottle for slicing through. All right, so, and good water. That's why I have so many, like you're actually watching. There we go. I'll tell you what, it doesn't get any more perfect when I say perfect, I mean perfect than that. It's very, very clean, no push. The bottle bottom never moved. It didn't even shift away from its spot. I hit that thing, it stayed where I freaking hit it. The bottle's in half. Tra la la la, boom die, right? Fantastic. All right, it's just a water bottle. That's nothing to get excited over, but I'm so excited. Um, but let's go, let's go do some other things here. All right, Bobo. Um, so we're going to do a little drop, uh, some drop test, and then we'll do a, a quick throw into the log. We're going to see how well this handle holds up before it loosens or see if it doesn't loosen. And we might do some minor prying. It is a, um, a hollow grind. I don't really enjoy prying too much with hollow grinds because they have thinner tips. This does have a false edge, um, but we'll see what we can do. So first, let's drop it. Let's test the balance and the loosening. And it's balanced very well, even with, the, even with the steel pommel. I have to say the balance is fairly impressive. I say that and it fucking falls. Don't blame the knife. That was me all day. All day. Hey. Boop. All right. So speaking of all day, without me letting it go odd, um, that'll happen all day. What kind of stance was that? Hey, boys. All right. So let's, uh, let's do some, some penetrating drops. Oh, my gosh. Now, normally what I'd like to do is lift the log with the blade to, to show you, but again, it's a hollow grind with a thin tip, so I don't want to snap the tip, so I probably won't do that. But I'm going to give it some minor prying and uh, check the tip here. So far, so good. I got to say, because, guys, it's a hollow grind with a false edge, it's it's going to penetrate really good that that's what they're made for um overall hunting knives they're made to be able to skin they're made to be able to cut meat they're made to be able to do all kinds of hunting needs um 
so obviously that's good now I was telling you guys about you know um, batoning and why we don't baton with um, a cheaper knife you know with, with weaker steel and we don't usually baton anyway with a uh, with a hollow grind at all but we're I told you kindling shall work so let's um, shall work us some kindling and that one went too quick so let's see so I mean I'm losing stick here uh, but you see hey um, you see that kindling is no problem so if you need to light a fire and this is hardwood so if you need to light a fire um, wow that's so good um, that just made some great like light me fluff but um, let me try that for a third time if you need to light a fire this will definitely definitely bring you the kind of kindling you need to get that started um, it's a it's a good blade for that let me see so you can see I'm really working this knife right now into the stick this is the kind of blade that I mean uh, the kind of stick that literally could warp the blade but you know what I mean I really wouldn't be a good tester if I didn't at least show you guys its capabilities so let me give this a few more good solid smashes here get this knife down through there check the edge there's no warps no folds no dings no nothing n o t h i n mark um it's just it's just an overall really good little knife so can i baton with it yeah do i recommend going crazy batoning with it no is everything still held up is everything nice and tight does it still look pretty is the edge still good fuck yeah things doing all right speaking of all right let's go do something all right all right all right so for a knife to be a proper hunting knife you have to go through animals and there's no better way to do that than to use an, a pig i don't have a pig what i have is the next best thing i have a soccer ball hand stitched leather soccer ball this is the real deal now um here's the thing this is weathered this has been outside for a long time so this is tough so this is actually a lot harder than your typical animal skin um but it has no problem searing straight through if i need to cut some some meat if i'm if i'm working a deer or a rabbit or something i'll tell you what if i can do this with that then going through the the pelt of a little bunny rabbit um or you know taking out a deer no problem no problem this blade this blade is fantastic is it still sharp i mean it was barely shaving in the beginning it's still barely shaving i don't know if you could even see that but there's some hairs right there so uh so far so good this is a really good little knife for under 20 freaking dollars guys let's keep going all right so let's work this edge a little bit all right let's go here um we could do that all freaking day all freaking day so let's uh go the other the other way here we'll reroute some of this skin some of this bark and we'll take it off no freaking problem we're gonna you know need to sharpen a stick for a trap to catch game or a spear to fish with or for roasting marshmallows no problem we need to make a tent post so we need a freaking spike right so we got to make a cool little notch on that wood there no problem if you need to make a flute um no problem the knife is one of those do-it-all camp knives pretty much and it's under 20 freaking dollars guys frost cutlery is getting the job done i'm impressed so here's the thing with all knives that i test or most knives that i test i throw them and throwing them is going to reveal how tight they are how strong they are or how horrible of a thrower i am 
Um, so let's uh, let's do that right now. Hold on. All right. So I just called my congressman, and he said that the knife throwing gods are with me. Let's go back five yards and uh, see if my congressman is a typical lying politician. <laughs> Fucking congressman. <laughs> <laughs> they suck. All right, let's see. Uh, yeah, I hit it kind of sideways, but it's still tight. So let's try again. How you like that, Congressman? Holy moly. That went in there really good. So that first throw, I actually hit it here. You can see the sap. And it hit, I don't know how it hit, but it hit this way. And... Um, Caught a bunch of sap. Normally on something like this, uh, on a throw like that, or a miss like that, on a blade like this, this is going to loosen, this is going to loosen, and this is possibly going to crack. Um, or this will just, bink, break off. That didn't happen. Um, everything is still mighty tight. There's no loosening. Um, the, uh, the throw that worked, the second throw, went in very nice. It actually threw really, really well. Once I uh, once I get the balance, you know, and that's that's half the trick is if it's a knife you've never thrown before, like I've never thrown this knife, um, it's just you know finding the balance, and you could be able to throw them all freaking day, um, but uh, worked out very well. No damage to the tip, no bending, no warping, no nothing. All right, so here we have it, the frost cutlery. I think it's called Iron Horse. I picked it up on eBay, and you know they don't usually, uh, they don't always get the names right, but it was it was the Iron Horse USA buoy, made in China. Um, and I'll tell you what, for the price it was, and it was under 20 bucks, around 20 bucks, if you just typed in frost cutlery hunting knives, eventually you'd end up finding this thing. Um, if you want a hunting knife, camp knife, just a, a, a good little knife, this works now I was skeptical when I bought it because of the size of the grip um, I figured you know with a with a five and a half inch blade and I was looking at the grip compared to the blade and I'm thinking this is probably not gonna fit in my hands it is small in my hands so if you have less than 10 inch hands it's probably gonna fit really nice however it wasn't uncomfortable in my hands and um, I think I think uh, that's a that's a good thing it's it's a comfortable blade to hold no matter how big you are no matter how small you are it's going to be all right and it fits well on the belt and for any of you who have you know an everyday carry type knife or want one you know what it means to have a a, a sheath that rides down too far you know what it's like to have a knife that sticks out too much this thing sits very very well it's a great wearing knife so if you are somebody who wants an everyday carry knife that can handle everyday carry tasks for the price point there's not too many knives that are going to be better than this one for that class um, it's a great little knife frost cutlery did a wonderful job is the fit and finish 100 percent no i'd give it a 60 is the edge 100 no but i'd still give it like a 90 it's pretty well uh it's pretty it's pretty well honed and it just comes down to how much am i going to use it before i need to fix it so i don't know i won't find out until i find out until then i am donnie b all day and until next knife